like the NFL season, Wave Lakes is back again this week. Uh, the pod thoughts back, so you know he'll Hi. take up a bunch of time talking. And this is my flu game, except I'm not going to perform as well as MJ. I'm just here to hit record, and that's really it. So whatever you guys want to talk about, go right ahead. Right. Just here so um, won't get fine. That's all he's here for. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, here we go. I want to talk about the Rams. I said before this got started that the Rams were gonna we're gonna be Super Bowl contenders, and what did they just do against um, a pretty good defense in Chicago? They did some yep. damage. I mean, uh, you know. Stafford looked looked good and consistent in his first game, but with his uh with his his whole new team around him, and um they even they even they even found time at the end to throw in Sony Michel to give him a few snaps, you know, try and get him set. They uh they made this work, and that defense is suffocating. That offense is terrifying, and um yeah, I'm sticking with it, man. Rams to the Rams to the Super Bowl out of the yeah, I'm year. with it. Uh, I'm I'm here for it. You, we we eye to eye right there. I, I just I think that they're just this they're, they're, they're so scary. I mean, we we knew that Matthew Stafford was a great quarterback, and honestly, this he put up the exact kind of performance you would expect out of Matthew Stafford. Um, but it's the fact that he's so consistent that really makes this team work. Because uh, the golf was great sometimes. He would, he would go four fifty five t- touchdowns, you know, like one hundred and forty passer rating. But he would you know the next week he'd throw two interceptions and they'd get like 120 yards passing total it was it wasn't the most amazing thing i mean you know let's take that rams team that was in super bowl 53 against the pats put stafford at the helm they win they win that game easily right i mean you know i i say easily because you know that defense suffocated the pats offense yeah i didn't say easy but they they win yeah you know they win yeah yeah i mean they, they definitely do better than three points yeah and they, they they can you know they can stretch the field now because you know Matt Stafford probably got one of the best arms. Oh yeah. Still, so I mean he was still like, doing he, yeah he was still doing that little sidearm sling that he does and uh, he he was making it work and uh, you you'd love to see it. I mean he, everybody loves Matt Stafford. I think. Right? I mean I'm not sure if if anyone you know no one in this pod's an NFC North fan so they can't confirm. But I don't think I can I don't know anybody who doesn't like him. I mean he's he, he's 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 fun to watch. Um, he's like a solid competitor. He, he works hard for it. And now he's got a team around him that he can really go for. I mean, it really, he didn't have the worst in Detroit for the entirety of his career. He did have like, what, seven years with Megatron? And he's had some decent, decent help around it, but he never had, had a full roster ready to compete like he does now. And that's the, that's what really lifts this team. And I'm, I'm so excited for it. Yeah, I would definitely say Matthew Stafford definitely takes his team to a different level. Um, mm-hmm. Do I still feel like they're the best team in that division? Um, I don't know because I still personally like uh, San Francisco. Um, mm-hmm. e- even if you were to take LA, I wouldn't, you know, totally disagree with you. But I feel like, you know, they were the I won't, won't say the best. They were last time the 49ers were healthy. I feel like they were probably top two teams in the NFL. And that's why they got to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they've gotten better ever since then, you know, adding, you know, better weapons all around and getting more athletic and, and stuff like that. So it's tough, but I probably take San Fran over the Rams right now, but I would love to see them, you know, compete and whoever comes out on top, that's who I would say is the better team. All right. I mean, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, share, they're sharing, a, uh, sharing a division and I'm excited to see who wins that. Yeah. I don't know if uh, I feel like the Cardinals are second best behind the Rams. I got Rams yeah. one and then Arizona two. Now I so, know it. I, I know, you know it may be. It may be. I don't think it's overreaction. I'm not just gonna make some hot take about you know Arizona getting ready to go to the Super Bowl or anything. But I think they're a little better than the 49ers. I just really believe that. How so? Because well, mainly on the defense. I, mainly on the defense because now you know I, I forgot. I, how I don't know, but I forgot all about them getting JJ Watt. Like it wasn't until I saw them playing that I'm like, shoot, I forgot all about JJ Watt. I, I just forgot. <laughs> and I already knew about Chandler and you know Buddha, who I think is the best safety in the game. So and now I think Stafford. Uh Kyler Murray takes another level, another step forward. They got the best receiver in DeAndre Hopkins already. So I, I, mean, I just like I just like him. And in that continuity, and that I like Cliff Kingsbury. He's getting a little more, you know, acclimated to, you know, some action. Mm-hmm. So I, I just like I don't like it more than the Rams, but I just like it more than San Fran. And San Fran can't really ever stay healthy. I just don't think I just don't think they're gonna stay healthy. It's almost like that, you know, they got like that Kyrie Irving syndrome. They just can't stay healthy. They're great when they there, 
but you don't know if you're going to get them for five snaps or five games or five minutes. You just don't know. So mm-hmm. that's my thing with, with the Rams. I mean, the, the 49ers. Yeah, so, I, I kind of love that at this point, you know, we were all talking Rams easily about, you know, you know, you know one of the best teams in this division. And then it's 49ers and Cardinals battling for second and third. And the Seattle Seahawks are the dumpster fire of this division. Does that mean? I mean, every team yes. in this division nah, is currently nah. at one and zero. I mean, the Seahawks just won twenty eight to sixteen, and they that 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 puts them as the lowest scoring team in this division so far this season, and with the third the the second worst offense, second worst defense in this division this season. Like that that's an incredibly hard mark to beat. Are we are, are Seattle really the worst team in here right now? I mean, uh, they're probably the worst team, but not because they're a bad team. It's just yeah. the West is juiced. So I would, at this point, I would still say Arizona is the worst because just simply off of what I saw last year. I mean, they started off what five, five and two, last year, and, and then they, somehow they, they finished eight, eight and eight. So like, yeah, they, I remember, you know, I'm incredibly familiar with their last one of the season. That was that that that, that Hill Murray hurt exactly. But, uh, at least exactly. that was the end of it. I didn't have to hear about them at all after that. Yeah, exactly. So you know, they pretty much won the only game, well, one of the two games they finished the season on on a hail mary. So, mm-hmm. like I said, we just saw a complete collapse from them. And it's not like they play, you know, the best com- competition out there. But like I said, yep. I just, I just feel like if they, I, I have to see it first before I, I say okay, they're better than than Seattle. Because mm-hmm. like I said, what I saw from them last year was really disappointing. I think I had them ranked second in that division behind San Fran before the season. And then obviously San Fran got hurt, and then you know just things got you know jumbled up and stuff like that. So, like I said, yeah. once I see it, see them not duplicate what what they did last year and get past that, then I would probably rank them over Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I, in my in my weekly power rankings, I've currently got the 49ers just above the Cardinals, but I'm not sure if I entirely agree with that anymore because San Fran. I mean, you know, we just they just lost Raheem most up for the season, sure, but. Uh, the biggest loss that they really suffered was in the off season when they lost uh, Robert Sala to New York. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think he's he was he was uh, indisputably the number one defensive coordinator in the game, and um, I think that you know, yeah, they beat they beat Detroit forty one to thirty three, um, but they allowed thirty three points to that Detroit offense with no wide receivers whatsoever. Jared Goff launching it to them uh, and uh, an offensive line that outside of Panay Sewell isn't really set up to do very much. It's just kind of shocking that they allowed that many that many points. I mean, sure they won it. It was a shootout, and, but it should never have been a shootout. The gap because all that happened in like the last 10, 8 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and they just they just collapsed and it. it, it yeah, hmm? yeah it, how how quick they shut the gap off. If that's a if that's an Arizona or Forty Nine or some, then they lose that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, not the point honest because they wouldn't be playing themselves. But you know, <laughs> somebody else, you know, they lose mm-hmm. that game. Yeah, if they if they have, if they're playing against a you know, if they're playing against a slightly more capable defense and an offense that was even marginally better than it was, then they really could have blown that lead. And it's not encouraging seeing their defense collapse like that against one of the worst offenses in the NFL. I, don't I mean, two like quarterbacks. See, I don't like that whole Jimmy Garoppolo Trey. I, I don't like that Trey Lance Jimmy. I don't like that. No. For some reason, I don't. I don't like that. Yeah, it feels kind of like bootleg Drew Brees and Taysom Hill. And, yeah. And and, and and that only worked to a certain extent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that mainly worked because you have a Hall of Fame, all-time great quarterback, and then an athletic freak for, a, you know, a tight end slash running back slash receiver slash extra blocker slash quarterback. I mean, you know, Trey Lance is set up to be an athletic quarterback, but he's not Taysom Hill in the way Taysom Hill is Taysom Hill. Um, and it just you know, you, Jimmy G isn't Drew Brees either. They're both perfectly capable, I'm sure, but they're not. They're not on that level. And you need, you know, you need these guys to fill roles. And if they're just two quarterbacks who do slightly different things, you need a starter. And you need you need to decide who's going to be the quarterback for this team long term. And you need to decide it soon before this, it's too late. So let me ask ask you you guys because because this is one of the games that I wasn't able to uh, watch that Bills versus Steelers game. Um, because I, I saw there was a point I think Buffalo was up ten nothing or thirteen nothing or something around. It's ten nothing. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you see Pittsburgh just you know marching back. You know what? What was your opinion of of um, that game? Uh, 
Okay, so, um, admittedly, it was not the start we were expecting as Bills fans. This, I've never, I've never gone into a season expecting a deep playoff run before. I, I, I'm, um, I'm in my mid twenties. I'm, um, I, I'm in my mid twenties. I, uh, I feel like I'm, I, I've been watching the Bills for a long time, and this is the first time I've actually gone into a season with with, with deep playoff expe- expectations, and I had good reason to have them. Um, you know, we were, we were coming off the best season I'd ever seen, potentially one of the best seasons we'd ever had outside of our Super Bowl appearances. Um, we were, uh, you know, we broke almost every record on offense we'd ever had. Our defense was coming back to form. And um, we just got better in the offseason. We didn't lose any major pieces. We, you know, brought in some quality talent. We drafted promising young rookies to help our positions of need. It was, you know, it's all there. And that it is still all there. Um, if you look at if you look at all the stats and the advanced stats, this is a pretty standard game for the Bills. It's just every little 50-50 thing went the wrong way. We had a block punt return for a touchdown. Um, okay. Yeah, but you know our run defense was a massive problem last year, and we kept Najee Harris under wraps. He played every single snap and was pretty much nowhere to be seen. Um, you know, we uh, our secondary was fantastic. There were a couple, you know, ticky tack penalties, but that's the way of the game. Um, our offensive line was a disaster, though. They looked like Swiss cheese, and the fact that we were playing the best, arguably the best defensive line in the NFL, um, didn't help. Uh, but it's given me some. It's given us a lot to think about, and I think that um, last year, you know, the Hale Murray um, kind of put a chip on our shoulder, and we didn't lose again after that until the AFC Championship game. And everybody thought, hey, maybe this AFC Championship game lost is the fire. We need to come back and win it all next season. But then we went through an off-season of hype, where everyone was like, great, well, now they're expected to do great things. Every pundit across the market said, yeah, Bills to the Super Bowl. This is how it's going to go. And um, I think we might have just needed to be humbled again. You know, you get cocky, and you might just need to be told to sit down, shut up, and put your best 60 minutes forwards. Otherwise, you're going to get smacked. And, um, yeah, we, we played well in the first half. In the second half, we collapsed. We didn't take advantage. You know, the plays were there to be made, and we didn't make them on both sides of the ball. And it ultimately, we were disappointed. But, I mean, credit to Pittsburgh. They had a pretty solid off season, and they're looking like they're ready to compete for the AFC North again, especially considering what happened to the Browns and Ravens collapses. Um, but for me, it, it was it's a little different for me. I, I had one question sitting there looking at it mm. i was looking why in the hey and i'm i'm right so so on josh allen i think he's top five quarterback at five but i'm just looking huh why in the hell do you got josh allen throwing what I, well because i end up looking because i go back and look at it. it was like what 51 times yeah you let him throw 51 times Again, TJ Watt, that D line sitting mm-hmm. back, and you know that old line suspect, and you yep. gonna sit there and let TJ Watt and all these boys sit there and tee off on them, especially when you had uh Mike Singletary, Devin Sick. I mean, he was running the ball pretty well. He and was so, try to run that, but instead you got to sit back and jo- instead of let TJ Watt come get him. That mm-hmm. I, that was the for me on a simpler basis, you know, on my little mind and my little world. That's the game right now. Why you got Josh Allen throwing like that? That fifty-one against that line, that defense. That mm-hmm. that's that that's what it was for me. I couldn't figure out why that kept on going. I, especially mm-hmm. if y'all couldn't run it. That's one thing, but y'all seem to do decent. Yeah, and well, that's that, that was a problem last year. That was how we counteracted our major issues: is that we went, you know, every single time the going got rough, you put the ball in Josh Allen's hands, and he did what it took to win every single time. Um, you know, he was a, he was an absolute machine and, um, he still is that player. I mean, you know, it's not like one, you know, that was one season of greatness. Now he's back to being, you know, the Josh Allen, that people, you know, think that they remember from 2018 and 19, they always have it wrong, but, uh, no, he's still, he's still top five. He's, he's, he's still a great quarterback, but it, the, the, he's, he, the game plan was garbage. Um, Josh Allen's individual performance, if you look at his stats was pretty good. He had a couple of throws that he should have made that he didn't. Um, but that happens to every quarterback every game. Um, ultimately, we needed a better game plan to tackle that defensive line because they were all over us. And um, maybe 
play calling from uh, from Brian Dable, who is you know touted as one of the best offensive coordinators in the game, and he last year he was. This game wasn't his best work. I mean, multiple um, this, you know designed QB runs at the wrong time. Um, a lot of uh, I mean, you know, we called a flea flicker on third and one from about midfield, and then didn't go for it on fourth and one after that went incomplete. We called a. Uh, it, we weren't aggressive enough. We got a 75-yard kickoff return on the opening kickoff of the game and had to settle for a field goal yep. um, from the opponent's 25-yard line. Um, and we we pitched it to Breeder in, uh, we, we, on fourth and one, pitched it backwards seven yards to Breeder and hoped he would run eight yards forwards to get the one yard that we needed to gain. It's It, it wasn't a great game plan, I think, that, far far more than just adjustments need to be made to it i think that we should throw it out scrap the whole thing do what we did last year and just do it better with the better with 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 the team that we have now i mean everything's set up to for us to succeed if we just you know stay the course and do it do it do it right keep that chip on our shoulder we've clearly earned it again um then come back and repeat what what we were good at before but you know, it remains to be seen if we can do that. I'm not one to overreact. I feel like I still feel confident. This is still a team that's going to win this division. Yeah, um, yeah. But it, the, the the slap in the face really stinks right off the bat, especially for us an off season where we're so excited to get going. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that's what it was for me. But now, oddly enough, I'm probably one of the few. But I actually picked Pittsburgh to beat Buffalo. Mm. I didn't. I I, I, I picked them just to be. I mean. I just I I my thing with Buffalo, I just gotta <laughs> I just got a hard time just giving Buffalo that I like I know Josh Allen's good and I, again I got him top five. I, I do. Mm-hmm. But it just the I'm like, man, I just they just give me I, I just can't really wrap around them how everybody is. I don't know if it's just if it's a me thing or if I just I, it's just hard, hard for me to the wrap around Buffalo. I, mm. I look at Buffalo and Tennessee in the same light, except Buffalo's better than the Titans. I know that. But yeah. just, I don't really, in that division, because you guaranteed about four or five wins off to about four already. So, and then in the AFC, I do think, I can't, I don't think I can't name, I can't name five teams better than the Bills, but I, I could, I would go three for sure. Mm. But for me, it's just kind of hard to do that. It's just hard yeah. for me to around the bills for whatever reason for whatever mm. reason it, it's just kind of hard for me to mm. wrap around i respect that and um while we're uh while we're talking about claiming you know claiming our ballsy picks for this weekend i picked the raiders and mm. um i don't i I, th- I think we should talk about that i uh <laughs> i feel like i feel like that game was um was so good that the raiders did have to win it twice just so we'd be just so we'd be we would be sure it was over because that was that that thing was a thing of beauty i mean Carl nasa yeah. with the uh about the strip sack right you know, to, to win the game, but the game should have been over like 10 minutes earlier. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, is, there, is Derek Carr a top 10 QB? Is no. Lamar Jackson been, has Lamar Jackson been figured out? What's going on with Baltimore? I want to, I want, I want to know. So I was listening to the, uh, to the sports, sports talk show that I listened to all, all the time. I think it was, what's today, Wednesday? I listened to it yesterday. Yeah. And one of the questions that they proposed was, you remember how last last offseason people were saying that they, quote, unquote, figured out Lamar, right? So somebody else asked, has Lamar figured out defenses? Because, you know, it's, it's almost like he really relies on his, you know, athleticism, but it's like when you ask him to, you know, pass it, some it's like sometimes he does really, really good, but then it sounds like he was really, really folds, and you can really see where his limitations are passing the uh, football. Because I think he's an elite football player. Stephen A. Smith said this. He's a great football player. But as far as being a passer, I think he kind of – I won't say he's middle of, of the pack. He's definitely pretty good at it. But I think, like I said, he's really limited. So what do you guys think as far as that? I mean, yeah, as an athlete, he's, he's, he's top top three as a quarterback in the NFL. Um, he's, he's, you know, his athleticism and his, his sort of agility, his speed, his ability to, you know, cut a dime is – it is a lot like a running back, you know, everyone makes jokes, but he does have a lot of the elite traits that a quality running back does have. Um, but I think as a passer, he's 15 to 10 in the NFL. 
um, because it's he, you know, there are some things he does great, and he does, you know, he does the you know that that little read option, absolutely mm-hmm. deadly for that team. No matter who's in a running back, um, you know, they can get any defense to bite. They can, you know, force any man open. But half of that's game plan, and half of that's him, him at the line making the adjustment. And I just don't think that when he is stuck in the pocket and he has to throw downfield. He does what a lot of rookies do early, which is, you know, they feel the ghost pressure. They think it's coming and they bail. Um, and Lamar should have grown out of that by now. Um, and, you know, that coupled with the fact that his, his, his general ability to, you know, throw, throw, throw into tight cover. He doesn't have the same arm strength there to fit the ball into tight windows. And, yeah, you know, bailing from an empty pocket um, because you could gain five yards rushing. Mm-hmm. When you you know you might have a man fifteen yards downfield coming open, is not an elite quarterback trait, and I, don't know, I think that he's it's not that he's regressed a bit. I think it is just defensives know how to play him now, and unless he's willing to step up as a pocket passer and put in the work needed to really elevate his passing game, you know, just from just behind the line of scrimmage, um, I think he's he. he, he He's still going to be great. He's still going to be great, and I still love him. I just don't think that he's going to be that top five unstoppable threat again, unless he mm-hmm. does something drastic to change his game. Um, three things. Mm-hmm. Number one, you're not running your way to a Super Bowl. That's that's why mm-hmm. the Ravens will never win a Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson. You're not running your way to a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Number two. Lamar, he has he is a he's a mobile quarterback, but he got some of the worst traits you could possibly have. Like when you if you go number one, he fumbled twice. That's number one. Yeah. That was and number bad. two, when you doing that, why are you uh why are you sitting there trying to switch hands? That's like the worst thing you could do. Like mm. if I, if you get hit, we've all played football at some point, whether it's for a school, high school, and in, in the streets. I was more of a street type player myself. <laughs> But anyway, you know, but, you know, if you get hit in the air, you don't switch hands. You want to hold on to it. So I'm just trying to figure out why are you sitting there trying to switch hands? That's that. And then I was sitting there, went back and looking back at the game when it really started to rubber meet the road. I'm looking at the coverage like I'm sitting there looking at it and I see it. And it's, a, it's basically I'm looking like at a single high safety. They're sending everybody. They are sending the house. That's like what uh, some people some people call it a bomb blitz. That's what most people call it, which means you trying to blow up the line. Mm-hmm. And when that happens, usually you're gonna have you're gonna have at least two receivers or one for sure out mm-hmm. there naked. And he's not he's missing th- throws that y'all said he should be making right now. He missed he had Mark Andrews. I'm talking about out there naked. Like like my little girl say he was out there with the naked butt. I'm talking about could have walked in there. So you missing routine throws that you mm-hmm. should be making right now. Yeah. And that tells me between you seeing all that, you don't trust your receivers. Mm-hmm. Like he'll look, if he don't see it right there, he off to the races. He don't trust the pocket. And and Cam Newton used to do this a lot back in the day. Like he mm-hmm. trusts his ability more than he does the game plan. Now, granted, mm-hmm. he was fighting against Mike Shula. So some of that he was getting hamstrung. No, nobody talk about what, what Cam was subjected to with Mike Shula, but that's another topic for another day. But mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he trusts the receivers. Like he'll look, and if he ain't, he don't see it right there. He off mm. to the races. Now it's mm. fine because they're a running team. Any was not fine because they're not gonna win. But that's what it is. They're not. They didn't figure out Lamar Jackson. You know, even if you know what he's gonna do, it's hard to stop. But now you just game plan against it. If you know they gonna run, and you know he don't trust their receivers, then. It's only so far you get. It's the same thing with the Titans. Yeah, they got Derrick Henry. Yeah, they got Julio. Yeah, they got A.J. Brown. But guess who the quarterback is? You know, who going to touch the ball more than anybody? Ryan Mm -hmm. Tannehill. And therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the problem. And now it's even more on display now because the the Ravens lost everybody and and they granddaddy. I think they lost a couple of water boys, too, in that practice. So now you know it's all on Lamar Jackson, and you know he's not going to throw it downfield. You know he's not going to read the defense. You know he's going to take off. All you got to do is sit there and put contain in there, and there what you have, what you got. Yeah, you got you, you to sit and duck in the pocket. Kind of, if, if, he can't, if he can escape, he's going to get maybe a couple of yards because you've got a blanket coverage. And um, if, you, you know, if, if he can't escape the pocket, he's got no other throw to him. I mean, he's just going to be sitting there. He's going to fall apart. I uh, I 
I think that it's it's one thing though that I mean you know a lot of quarterbacks can and this is you know something Lamar needs to do is they can beat the blitz with their arm you know find the man coming open you know like you said he's out there naked he can uh, you know you could find him just get the ball to him fast and um, you know, you know that's how a lot of veterans do it they do it you know in this day I mean you know you're seeing guys like you know Tom Brady and uh, ben Roethlisberger, you know, a, a, aging QBs who uh, who, who get and the I ball think, out fast, both and out of self preservation and to succeed. I, I think they tried that, mm-hmm. and that's why they got had like a Hollywood Brown, and they added Sammy Watkins. So I think they're aware of that. They mm-hmm. seeing everybody trying to send the house, so they got somebody that can try to take the top off. Mm-hmm. But either Lamar doesn't know how to make the, the read, or he just don't see it. It's mm-hmm. it's one of the two. That's impossible for me to know that. It's just not yeah. happening. So. And now I know they're going to be run heavy for sure. That's just how they are. And they're pretty damn good at it. You yeah, know what absolutely. I'm One of the best but, rushing offenses in the NFL. Correct. But you, but you're not running your way to a super, if this was not, if we was, if this Ravens team was in 1994 or 95 with Emmitt Smith and Terrell Davis and all them, mm-hmm. maybe they do got a good shot at the Super Bowl. but them mm-hmm. days are over. Yeah. And, you know, being a different offense means that you're hard to tackle until you've been, until they know how to, how to, how to be you. You have to adjust. I mean, right. um, you know, it, it's the same for me. You know, it's the same trying to be any offensive coordinator, any quarterback, any wide receiver, any running back, anyone you, any skill position player or any coach. If you can figure out how they do things and just follow the, the regular old textbook on how to beat people who do those things, then you will beat them and it's on them to adjust. You know, the offense runs a play, the defense, you know, t- takes what takes, you know, takes what the offense does and they give it back. And then the offense responds to that. But if uh, if the defense can respond to the offense, the offense can't respond back to the defense, then defense is going to win. The worst, the worst thing that could have happened to the Ravens is Lamar Jackson. And I like Lamar Jackson a lot. Mm-hmm. But the worst thing that could have happened to the Ravens is Lamar winning that MVP. Mm. That's the worst thing that could have happened because that told them that, hey, we run. Y'all still we can run. But guess what? We winning with it. But guess mm. what? It ain't no bad teams in the playoffs. Yeah. You know, you can beat up on some teams and some some scrubs or, they, you know, it's not 82 games. Mm. But uh, I think that's I think that's what really hurt them. And they yeah, they talking about they beat the Titans, but the Titans are running team, too. So if you play two running teams against each other, which one go win? The better running team. Yeah. <laughs> and Lamar's right. better than uh Tannehill. So I wasn't too shocked. But when they go against a quarterback that can, you know, make those throws and make adjustments and has like at least semi-decent run game, you're gonna have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. I um uh, all right. So we touched we've touched on Raiders Ravens. I mean, you know, that was a phenomenal game, but um, yeah, it was a great game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I inarguably probably the most entertaining game of the week for me. Um, but if it wasn't that game, what game did you guys like best? Which game did I like best? Mm. Do it got to be a close game or just a personal enjoyment? I mean, it could be oh, either. Oh, uh, I'll be honest with you. I I enjoyed the Arizona Titans game. Mm. Okay. I'd I enjoyed that. I probably have to go. Out of a few games I watched, the Cowboys Tampa game. That was probably my favorite game, just simply because obviously it's it's the first game of the season. It's Tom Tom Brady. I don't. I hate the Dallas Cowboys personally, but I love Dak Prescott and seeing him come back doing what he he did. Kind of reminded me like. Damn, this is this dude's actually a really great quarterback, and uh, this is first first game back, so I was like, he's going to consistently get better. So that's why yeah. I feel like this is my favorite game. I mean, yeah, I mean, like uh, it's hard to root against Dak right now. He made he made the Cowboys almost likable for the first time in like ever, I think. Um, it's it, it's something I'm. Uh, it, he's been fun to watch, and I'm really really rooting for him. Um, it's, it's strange to root for him to succeed, but not the rest of the team. But um, that's what's Hold happening. Hold on, so all y'all like that, but hate the Cowboys. Yeah, I yeah. think it's... Yeah, think Deontay, I get your position. I understand your position. Yes, then. Why? Yes. Okay, I have very good reasons to hate the Cowboys. I feel like... I feel like... I feel like everybody should know. Oh, yeah. Um, back yeah. Back. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know, Phil. Like I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, so when the Bills went to four Super Bowls in the nineties, when we no. lost all four of those Super Bowls, <laughs> I forgot. Every about that. Okay. single one of those Super Bowls <laughs> was lost to the <laughs> NFC East. 
And uh, one of them was to the Washington Redacteds. One of them was to the Giants, wide right, as I'm sure many people remember. And the other two were lost to the Cowboys. And frankly, they don't they don't really let you live that kind of stuff down. Um, I didn't so think about that. Kind of, okay, so imagine, imagine, of course, they've been force feeding you this for years and years and they never let it go. Um, eventually it becomes like this like rock inside of you and it's never going away. You can't, you can't shake it out of me. Um, cowboy hate is going to be in my veins until I die, but that doesn't stop me rooting for Dak Prescott because, you know, much, much like, you know, it's so kind of my blood as a Bills fan to love a good comeback story. And the man has such heart. He elevates the team. He's so entertaining to watch, but my best game for the week wasn't that game anyway. I loved that Chiefs comeback. I'm not tired of Kansas City just yet. Um, this this Chiefs Browns game. I mean, we I I enjoyed seeing the Browns go up. You know, there's this like Lake Erie brotherhood of uh, between Browns fans and Bills fans. You know, we're all on the same page here. But I love the Browns, um, and I I really it couldn't couldn't handle having Josh Allen be the worst QB from the 2018 draft that week. Um, and so, you know, watching Baker Mayfield throw a game losing interception felt pretty good. Watching Lamar collapse on national TV was pretty good. And um, it didn't feel great watching Sam Donald play really well for the Panthers. But, like, I like the Panthers. Well, I never had anything wait against Donald. What we not no, to wait I hate the Jets, I to be the- but I love Sam Donald. I wanted him to succeed in New York so badly. That was going to be a rivalry, him and Josh. Oh, that would have been brilliant. But um, no, I, I, I root for the Panthers. I love the Panthers. I have to. You know, my team's half Panthers. <laughs> like, it's, 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 they're just so entertaining. And I can't, I can't root against them. But it was so elaborate. weird seeing El- Sam Donald. Elaborate. Mm, it, cause you don't want to get me started because I, I run the rest of this time uh, I'm talking about Carolina. So you, you don't want okay, me to. Okay. I it. couldn't have Sam Donald beat Josh Allen in like, even week to week, you know, arguably, I mean, Sam Donald was the only 2018 draft QB to win this week. Um, and that was a hell of a QB draft class. You know, we can't forget that, you know, back in 2018, that was being touted as one of the best draft classes. Josh Rosen. Out. Yeah. Hey, I want, I, I'm not going to lie. Most Bills fans wanted Josh Rosen. We were like, Josh. And we were like, yeah. And they went, Alan. And we went, ah. And uh, obviously that turned around pretty quick. But hey, um, yeah, I, I was I, I was rooting for Sam Donald to succeed. I want him to, to work in Carolina. And if I'm he really gonna watching, in, he gonna work in Carolina. Well, with he's got, Marshall with DJ Gimme some Mo, Roby Anderson, Christian McCaffrey, aka Scat <laughs> Cat McCaffrey. You know it's getting ready to work. Ain't no way it's not gonna work. And then okay. we got that defense behind him. And it was satisfying that he beat the Jets too. Oh, it wasn't it that felt really good. Oh, no, the thing is, the Carolina Panthers have already done what the Jets under Adam Gase refused to do for Sam Donald, which is they build a team that works with him. And um, I think he needs a little more time to, to really fit into it. But uh, Donald's career is far from over if he can make this work in Carolina. But it's all it's on his shoulders now. It, it's all on his shoulders. The There's ifs. no more excuses, right? He can't, it's not about the team around him. But, uh, okay, so Deontay, Deontay, you have one more topic for us. Yeah, yeah so I just wanted to – quickly know one, one team you thought more of and one team that that you think less of after week one i'd probably have to go think more of the dallas cowboys i lied i lied i lied <laughs> i can't um i guess you can uh the rams and team i think less of would probably be the even though i, I didn't think they were going to be good probably the Titans. Okay, I respect that. I, I think I think yeah, the Titans definitely on the Dan hour for me. But the real team I think less of is the Giants because I knew they were going to be bad. I just didn't think they were going to be that Tried bad. Try to tell you. Try to um, tell you. They've but, been winning the bit. Okay, okay, okay. I already okay. thought highly of the Rams. I've been saying Super Bowl Rams since before we got started here. I'm on. I'm well on record about that. Um, one team that I had some faith in and that I got clowned for was the Saints. And now look where they are with famous Jameis throwing a nice five little five TD game there. They're getting it done. That defense suffocated the MVP. It feels good. Um, I got to say that, you know, they got those injuries. You know, they t- they just lost um, Lattimore to hand surgery the same day he signed the most for the most guaranteed money for a defensive back ever. 90 million, I think. Probably with that um, same hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it's, it's, he's 
he had uh, you know he had his, his right hand holding the pen and his left hand was in like a, a garbage press it wasn't ideal um but then uh yeah i i think i thought the saints were going to be good i'm so glad that they looked that good against green bay though that's that's my off arrow definitely giants down saints up um uh, the team i thought the most ironically they're in the same game the team i kind of look at a little more the eagles they impressed me they they really i thought yeah. i look at them they i didn't know they was going to look like that and then the team i'm down on you know i wouldn't high on them no way but even further down is the Atlanta Falcons because all I heard was Kyle Pitts going to be the best tight end. Oh, he's going to be all time great tight end, great all time great tight end. Oh, you got Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan, he can spread the flow. Oh, this and that, Matt Ryan, and then they got Calvin Ridley, who I like a lot. So, oh, they got all that. They got they going to spread it. They going to run it. They going to run it. Oh, watch out for Mike Davis, who they, I guess the, who they thought Mike Davis was Marshall Falk and Stephen Jackson. I don't know what the hell they thought they was getting ready to do with Mike Davis, but nevertheless, it didn't work. So, and Drop now then you got a blowout. Too. So, yeah. I just think it's funny that. The same game, the thing with Devontae Smith, you know, you know, Alabama, they're in championship games regularly. So the same game, he dominated in that same stadium in college and in pros, his first pro game. He go out there and, and shake it out there, too. I just think it's, that dome is it's the same dome. So I think Atla- Atlanta's down and me, Philly's up. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I respect that. One last thing. Justin Herbert, effing stud. Jesus <laughs> yeah. Christ, he's a stud. Yeah. I mean, you got to love, you got to love Herbert. He's, he's, Yep. He, he looks like he's going to do what Baker Mayfield fa- failed to do coming off the... Because Baker Mayfield had, at the time, the best rookie season ever for a QB. Um, and then Justin Herbert just broke those records and had the best rookie season ever for a QB. And then um, Mayfield took a step back and everybody was like, oh, no, now what if uh, what if Herbert does the same? Herbert's not going to do the same. Hey, we oh. know now. And I got one last question for Deontay. Deontay, when you going to make the call, brother? When you going to make the call? Out of